Oh, I'm going to just present it. So, I'm sure the video will be also happy to present it. Anyway, happy new year. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, is that clear enough for everyone? Can everyone see, uh, see the screen easily? Okay, right, so happy new year everyone. Uh, I'll do a, prepare a long talk, but I thought actually, given the start of a new year, it's probably quite a good idea to show you some of the things you'll be able to see if it wasn't cloudy. <laughs> so, um, well here we are at the start of January 2014, and uh, you'll see, you'll hopefully have noticed uh, Jupiter is coming round, and uh, we're at opposition actually on Sunday, I think. So you'll see, if I zoom in a little bit here, you'll see uh, this little red thing here. I probably do need the light down a touch. Was that too faint for your camera, was it? Oh. Okay. That will be better than the camera. <laughs> right, so um, we've got uh, this little red thing here is the Earth's shadow. Um, so it's mainly for lunar eclipses, but it also tells you when planets come past opposition. So um, if I lock on here, and we'll wind it for a couple of days, you'll see Jupiter. Uh, passes opposition over the next couple of days. So that's really the best time to see it. It rises at the same time as the sun sets and it sets just as the sun's rising. So it's visible all night long. And Jupiter will be around for several months, so it's quite a good target for, uh, for uh, well, any yeah, amateur astronomers really. So lots of cloud bands, you'll still see, see all of the four largest moons. Um, very often you see shadows of the moons um, actually passing in front of Jupiter, so that's quite nice as well. Okay, right. So, um, now many of you will have uh, seen all the hype regarding Comet Ison, which uh, unfortunately uh, disintegrated about five hours prior to the perihelion. And, uh, it looked like something had emerged on the other side, but it just sort of faded out into nothingness very quickly. So it was visible on the SOHO cameras, which are the NASA cameras pointing directly at the sun. But unfortunately it didn't seem to come back. Um, there is one possible last little uh, reprieve for ISON, in that on the so 10th, 11th, 12th of January, so that is next week, uh, Earth will be passing directly through where ISON was uh, back in about October. So um, we potentially could get a small amount of material coming in from ISON into the Earth's atmosphere. So uh, it will be worth watching out just in case there is a little meteor shower from ISON. Uh, it's probable that most of the particles are going to be a little bit small and maybe um, there's some suggestion that it will create noctilution clouds, so a really high altitude <coughs> shining clouds at some point, but um, it will be worth watching out for. Okay, um, someone mentioned earlier to me uh, about Mercury. And Mercury is usually it's too close to the sun to see very well, uh, but there is a little chance to see this twice this year, in fact. So if I just Come over here. So this is uh, the evening uh, where the sun's setting at setting moment. So if I wind on till just as the sun's setting, I'll wind back a bit. Okay, and uh, this is Venus here. It's just about to head in towards the sun, so it won't be visible many more days. Um, but just for doing that, you've got this little thing here, which is Mercury, and here's the Sun. And if I wind on a few days, you'll see, hopefully, that Mercury will be getting a little bit higher. I might do a few days at a time. 
And of course, the further it gets from the sun, the easier it will be to see. And crucially, that the sun's really low in the, um, it's sort of quite far in, above the southern hemisphere at the moment, because we're not far from the December solstice. But Mercury is climbing higher and higher. And I think it reaches the maximum elongation on the 31st, I think. So if I wind on one more time. Okay, so this is down in, this is the constellation here of Capricornus. And uh, I'll wind on one more to the 31st. There we go. And we'll see we've got the moon there as well. And we'll see that we'll set the sun. And Mercury should be sat there, hopefully, moderately high above the horizon. Never gets very high, it's not a... It's not an easy spot, but if we look on here, you'll see that uh, it's quite bright, magnitude minus 0.5. So it should be possible to see it in the early morning, uh, sorry, in the uh, evening, just after sunset. The best thing for finding it is going to be the moon. With the yeah, the moon there, uh, yeah. So you've got the moon here, a little crescent moon, and then just up there you've got Mercury. And uh, So hopefully that should be a relatively easy spot for Mercury. There was actually a slightly better opposite uh, uh, apparition for Mercury uh, later on in the year. Okay, um, so what's on that next little event? Not a lot happens in February unfortunately for us. Um, so we've got a little month with, without too many interesting events. Um, but there are some interesting events in March, um, which could be quite interesting. Uh, we've got a possible... The open day. Well, of course, we've got the uh, the NSA Open Day um, on the twentieth um, of March. There is a very potentially interesting event. Unfortunately, we're not going to see it from here, um, but you'll probably be able to watch it live over the internet. Uh, so, if I wind on to the twentieth of March, now this event last happened about five years ago, and I think the next event I think anyone spotted is in the year 2023, so they're not very common. I think it happened about 6 in the morning. You've got it on day, I Oh, yeah, I've got it on May. There you go, March. So about there, so if I press OK. So we'll... Uh... OK, so there we are, that's our sky. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go West overseas to New York, somewhere about there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a shame that well, the Americans seem to get a lot of the good events this year. They've got two lunar eclipses, yeah. and uh, they've got all sorts of. They've got a couple of occultations here, uh, and I've got this strange event here, uh, which very rarely happens. Okay, so this is the constellation of Leo, the lion. So you can see you've got bright regular. Uh, Nebula and some, it's quite a recognisable constellation. It's one of the few constellations that you can actually picture almost looking like the thing it's meant to be if you uh, look hard enough. Right, okay, so that's what Regulus normally looks like, uh, that's what uh, Leo normally looks like, but in New York City, from a line roughly from New York to up to Niagara Falls, um, Leo will be missing this star here. Regulus will disappear for about 12 seconds uh, as an asteroid passes directly across. Mm. Right, so if I zoom in. God, that will be on the internet. That will be on the internet, yeah. So, about 12 seconds, Regulus will disappear behind. That. I'm zooming in. There you go. There's a little asteroid there. Uh... Right, so it's 163 Erigoni. Origini and it will pass across Regulus on the 20th. So that is an event that comes around not very often. You know, to see a bright star suddenly disappear, it's a lot really weird. Okay. How long for? How long for? About 12 seconds, I believe, oh, if you're yeah. right in the middle. <laughs> so not very long, but, you know, it's, it's long enough to notice. 
It'll be cloudy. It'll be cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> so if you ask Andrew, you're squinting in front of my Leo all the time, you'll probably miss it. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll be cloudy for like exact 12 seconds. That's yeah. exactly it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, I mean, that, that, that's something you'll probably be able to watch that on the internet. There's a lot of live streams for, uh, for, for things like that. Okay, so, um, so back to, back to Blighty. Um, later on in that month, uh, if you are an early riser, we've got um, we've got Venus coming back with a morning apparition. So uh, we've got let's uh, zoom a little bit over here. Right. So in the early morning, you'll see as we wind on, we've got uh, there we go. It's not very favourable uh, apparition for us because uh, you see the ecliptic from here is so flat at that time of year in the morning. So, uh, but it's possible you might you, you may see something. Uh, and then a few days later, we've got a much better event for just about the whole world because we've got the return of mo many astronomers' favourite planet. Uh, so if I wind on to. Uh, To midnight. There we are, midnight. Okay, and there it is, Mars. Uh, so on the 8th of April, uh, we're at opposition. So again, visible all night long. Uh, it's a reasonably bright one, but not the brightest one it's going to be. Uh, I think 2018 is going to be a very close pass, but there we go. So Mars will let's try and get on the Exact date, and there we go. So, Mars, there we go, magnitude minus 1.5. So, that'll be quite good. Uh, about a quarter of a degree in angular size. So, hopefully, it should be quite visible. You'll be able to see uh, lots of surface features in the telescope. Um, and then, just a month later, if, you, if Mars wasn't your favourite planet, this one probably is. Um, so, let's wind on. Days or so. How many days will it be visible for, Richard? Mars. Yeah. Mars, but Mars sticks around for quite a long time. Um, I think uh, I can't remember. I think it should be visible until almost the end of 2014. All oh, right. But it, it gets fainter quite quickly. So. Because um, so, you just know it's going to be clouded that night. So. Oh yeah, it, it, you don't need to spot it on that exact night. In fact, as it goes on, it'll be higher and higher as the sun sets. So it probably gets a little bit easier. Oh. Uh, so we've got Saturn. Uh, which reached opposition on, I think it's actually the 10th of May. Uh, now, I think the rings are just about as wide open as they get at the moment. So if I zoom in, uh, you may be able to see some of the moons. Uh, but yeah, so the rings are reasonably wide open. If you've got a decent telescope, you should be able to see some of the rings, uh, some of the moons and some of the gaps in the rings as well. Um, unfortunately, over the next few years, Saturn's going to get really low at opposition. Um, I think it's about 2022 20, before it comes back to a reasonable height. So um, I would we'll wait. catch it this year and then it gets up to a decent height uh, so around the, late, the late 2020s, just, just for your information. Okay, and then on the 25th of May, we have another interesting event which doesn't come around very often. We've got quite a close pass from a comet, it's not very bright. Um, but I'm hoping it would be possible to see something. Um, what it is with this comet is it's really close. So let's go and see if I can uh, find it. 25th maybe. Right, 26th. Let's see if we can find it. Should be somewhere around here. There it is. Right, so 290 linear, it's a periodic comet. Uh, it won't be very bright, it, it may just be possible to see it in binoculars. Um, but you can see here, hopefully it'll tell you how far it is away, they go 0 0.06 astronomical units, so it's only 6% of the way between Earth and the Sun. Um, and it raises quite an interesting possibility because um, it, so it comes around. You know, uh, periodically, and Earth is going to pass directly through um, 
each stream of debris from every pass of this comet since about 1710, all in one night. So there are some hopeful signs that we could have a bit of a meteor storm. Okay, so they're anticipating meteors, hopefully at least three or four hundred per hour. Um, there's some optimistic that will guarantee cloud. cloud yeah. <laughs> there's some optimistic <laughs> forecasts predicting over a thousand an hour, uh, and they're going to come from uh, the northern constellation of Camelopardalis, which is a bit of a mouthful. I think is it this one here? Perhaps uh, it's kind of TC. It's one of the northern constellations up here. It's not very bright, um, but crucially, it is visible all night, so uh, won't be any issues with the gradient being uh, being too low. Um, so that is one to watch out for. Um, if it is clear on that, 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 that night, that could be a sight to behold. Uh, again, unfortunately, it's slightly best for the USA rather than here, but there we go. The date of that again? That's the 24th of May. We're expecting Earth to pass through about 12 different streams of debris, all, all within an hour or so. So that be, could be something to watch out for. I would suggest that the society set up uh, an observing session because you yeah. wouldn't need yeah. telescopes. That's right, yeah. So, I mean, we need to... Uh, it's a bit warm. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. But cloudy, as you say. So. Anyway, so it's one to watch out for. I mean, no one really knows just how dense all these streams are, but there's certainly indications that, it, that there's tentative optimism for this one. Okay, and at about the same time, um, we saw Mercury earlier in the year. Well, there's another opportunity to see Mercury. Um, Again, it's an evening uh, apparition, this, so uh, let's wind back the clock. So we've got um, Jupiter up here and Mercury about halfway between this and the Sun. And uh, you can see there we've got quite a decent altitude as the Sun sets. So we're, uh, again, slightly fainter, but uh, let's see if we'll find the altitude on here. Uh, where is the altitude? Yeah, altitude 15 degrees. That should be easily high enough to be hopefully spot that. So if you're after Mercury, there's quite a good opportunity to see it. Okay. Um, right. Well, let's move on to June. So June is not a month when you can do a lot of astronomy because uh, the sun never actually gets below about 12 or 13 degrees from here, so it never gets completely dark. Um, 24th of June, though, uh, there's an opportunity, hopefully, to spot Venus in broad daylight, because it will be less than one degree from the moon. Uh, I can find where it is. Uh, let daylight, one second, here we go. So we've got Venus and the Moon there, so I'll put this to the previous day. 24th, there we go. So you can see, there you go, quite close alignment. And because they're so close, you know, it'll be possible to see Venus, maybe even naked eye there, at the present Moon. And what's the separation there? It's not telling me what the separation is, but they're pretty close, maybe a degree or so. So that should be quite interesting. Um, oh, in fact, hold on, that's May. I need to go to uh, June. So we're not close to that. Let's try this. Venus and Moon. Up in Taurus. Yeah, it's fairly close and uh, possibly a good, op good opportunity to see it in broad daylight. Okay, now um, we had Mercury earlier, and um, <coughs> there's actually another little interesting event at the start of July. 
because we um, who put your hand up here if you see an asteroid? Not many. Uh, well, there's a good opportunity to see two of them uh, in the 5th of July because there are two, the two just about the brightest ones um, are within 10 arc minutes of each other, which is about one, I don't know, one third or so the uh, diameter of the moon. So, should easily be visible in one eyepiece. So, we're going to find out where they are. So, asteroid. And right, so let's go for Oops. Let's find it. So, there we go. There is Ceres. It's, it's actually the largest asteroid. And uh, this here is for Vesta, it's the brightest asteroid. So we've got Vesta, which is at magnitude 7, so it should be easily visible by binoculars or a small telescope. Uh, we have Ceres here, which is the largest one. Ceres is actually a dwarf planet, uh, a bit like Pluto. Richard, yeah. can I suggest you show us the proper motion on a yeah. daily basis or so a daily basis? Uh, reasonably quickly. I, I, yeah, I, that's the point yeah. I'm getting at. Can you create it as a dynamic so you yeah, can visualize I can, it? I can do that, yeah. So yeah, if I, um, I can animate, let's uh, go to this view here. Yeah. And uh, if I, let's just wind on about 20 days or so. And I'll just set to animate. Oops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, there are lots of asteroids out there, and uh, if I get up to this little animation, hopefully they'll come together nicely. So you see, this is every, every step is one day, and the, each one of these little dots is an asteroid. Uh, there are lots of them about. There's quite a gap with them. There are, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, most, of them aren't very, most of them aren't very bright. Um, but, you know, you should be able to see them in a lot of telescopes. But uh, we should have Sarah's popping into view from the top right any second. Hopefully. There it is. So you can see these two here are moving on. Uh, so that is Sarah's and that's Vesta here. So they're very close together. So Richard, what's the, what's the difference between an asteroid and a comet? There is an asteroid. Um, well, the, the difference has become quite blurred, really. Um, I mean, asteroids are rocky, usually rocky bodies. Uh, comets have got a lot of ice, but you know, there's some debate over whether you know what is the difference really. Um, there are some asteroids that seem to give off a little tail and. Uh, Comets that don't, so um, <laughs> yeah. what's in the name? Well, what's in the name? I mean, it, it's basically, it, it's usually the, uh, <coughs> the comets uh, tend to come from re really far out in the uh, in the solar system and uh, you know, tend to be icy, and these asteroids mainly are populated in the region between Mars and Jupiter. So, uh, that's a good opportunity to see that. Um, We've got to to it. Yeah, that's right. So, um, okay, um, now we've come on to the showstopper on 18th of August. You do need, um, we will be needing cooperation from the weather from this. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are, 18th. Unfortunately, it's one of these that's at about 3 a.m. or so. So, we'll have to pray to Sue Charlton. Okay, so if I come back to. Uh, morning skies. Hold oh, on, I need. Uh... That's around my Perseids, isn't it? Yeah, the Perseids aren't, aren't going to be very good this year because uh, I think we've got a full moon just about. So we need to go to the east. And here we are. Now, if I wind on a little bit, um, you'll see this is Gemini, where Jupiter has been moving this way. And I'll wind on. We don't need to wind on the whole day. Minutes. Okay, so as the time goes on, look what we have here. 
This is the beehive cluster just coming up in uh, constellation of Cancer. And we've got two little visitors. <coughs> right, that there is Venus. And this here is Jupiter. And I think they are 15 minutes apart, which is half the width of the full moon. So you'll easily be able to get those in a telescope like this. That would be spectacular. Now, so we do need cooperation from the weather. Um, yeah, so you'll be able to hopefully get them both in the same <coughs> piece. So, you yeah, know, Venus just about full, and uh, you know, Jupiter uh, magnitude minus 1.8 there, so should be quite a spectacular view. As I said, we do need cooperation from the weather, so the, it's cloudy that day too, unfortunately. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, as time goes on, uh, Venus has another close uh, call with uh, the bright star Regulus. So Regulus was the one that was blocked out by the little asteroid earlier. Uh, so we need to go into September now. <coughs> so September the 5th. Here we go. Uh, probably don't need to be at 4 in the morning. We'll see. Okay, so there it is, so Regulus and Venus really close, about one degree apart, so that'll be uh, quite a nice little photo. And we've got another um, close call, Mercury with Spica, but I think that's not going to be very easy to, to view from here. Uh, that's on the 20th of September. Okay, we've got our second little opportunity to look at an asteroid, because... Um, Vesta isn't the only thing that Ceres gets close to this year. Uh, so this is 4th of October. <coughs> Here we go, 4th of October. Oh, I'm not sure what time it's going to be actually. Let's, uh, let's have a look at what we've got. So it'll be over in the uh, western skies, hopefully. So if I zoom in here, here we go. That could make a, quite a nice photo there. You've got uh, Ceres, and there is Saturn. Okay, That's one width of the full moon up, up apart there. So uh, that'll make a nice photo as well. You get a little asteroid. Um, on the 19th of October, we've got another close call between a solar system body and a planet. And this is one I mentioned last year. Uh, again, this one's visible in the USA, not really from here, but we will be able to see the uh, approaches to it, hopefully. So I need to go to the 19th. I think it's about let's try 10 o'clock. So this is visible from the USA uh, in the early morning. Um, so where am I going? Gretchen, do you have to switch planetarium software? Uh, this is called Carte du Ciel. It's a um, it's, it's really good uh, free, it's free. free software you can download from the internet. And uh, it's, it's a pretty good... Uh, it's very good. Right, so <coughs> I'll wind on a little bit. Here it comes. So we've got Mars here, very low down. And if I zoom in a bit, if it stops, <coughs> it stop. There we go. Um, we've got this little comet here. Now, these are actually, um, this is not a coincidence that it's this close. A lot of time when you see two objects close together in the sky, they're actually a long way apart. Um, this one is actually really close to Mars. Um, 
that distance at close approach is meant to be somewhere around uh, maybe 50,000 miles, um, <coughs> which will be probably the closest approach of any comet to a planet since one hit Jupiter. Will they get a photograph of it this time? I hope so. Strike. We we need to we need to have a uh, a non-government <coughs> shutdown. I think um, this one will probably cause an almighty meteor shower on Mars because it is highly possible that the coma of this comet will envelop the planet and there'll be uh, fireworks there. I guess that'll be probably about magnitude minus 15 or something in the sky of a mile or so. Should be visible. Uh, from Earth, it's, it's about magnitude 8 or so. Um, when this was first discovered, um, it was in the area bounds to actually hit Mars. Um, I think they've just about ruled that out now, but if it was going to hit, it was going to impact at about uh, 30,000 um, kilometres an hour or so. And, um, if it did that, the reckon it would create an impact crater about 500 miles wide, so uh, could make a bit of a mess of all these Mars rovers that are on the planet at the moment. <laughs> okay, um, right, there aren't too many more now. We're coming close to the uh, the end of the year. Um, we <coughs> have got another little data element that uh, possible you be able to see a planet during the daytime on the 25th of October. Uh, it is visible from the UK this time, which is uh, makes a change. But so it is during the day, which is going to be a bit inconvenient. Um, but we'll we'll see. It could be visible. So this here is uh, Saturn. And if I zoom in, you will see it's got a friend with it. There we go. So we've got uh, an occultation of Saturn. Um, it's possible the moon might be visible, and you might be able to see this in a telescope. Um, it's probably a bit washed out, but um, nevertheless, it's an opportunity to see something. Um, so in this occultation, it's obviously coming against the dark side uh, of the moon there, and uh, as we go on, I'll do a little animation. Here we go. So um, other parts of the world have nighttime occultations of Saturn this year, but this is the only one visible from the UK. You'll see at uh, a very civilised time of about 5pm, it will disappear from the uh, dark side there, if it finally gets there. There it is. And um, I think that's just about it, I think. Um, We've got a couple of meteor showers, apart from the, the potentially meteor storm, to watch out for. Uh, unfortunately, most of the normal major showers are hampered by the moon this year. Uh, but the Eta Aquarids on the 7th of May could be quite a good one to watch out for. And uh, we've got the Orionids in October, <coughs> mid-October, and then the Leonids in sort of mid-November could be reasonably minor showers to watch out for and uh, yeah hopefully the opportunity to see something spectacular in uh, 24th of May so there we go that is uh, a little whistle top tour of the night sky in 2014 of course you've got the usual uh, deep sky uh, oh the little comet there a bit too close to the sun to see um, yeah, they've got usual uh, events at the moment. Obviously, you've got Orion, uh, which is packed full of stuff to look at, which is will be visible for the next few months. And, uh, so that should present us with some interest. Okay, so that's just about it. Any questions? Or... Any questions? Or um, the reckoning could be quite a sharp peak is, is the only problem, so right. which is going to coincide with darkness in the USA. Right. Um, that, that is the potential sticking point. It, I don't know how 
wide that that, that track is. Right. If it's reasonably wide, we could get a good show here. Right. If it isn't, we might get a few, but not very much here. But uh, potentially those showers are, have been built up over hundreds of years, so they can easily be quite spread out like that. So um, it, it's something to watch out for. Like I said, it'd be, it could be, again, the USA could be the one where it's going to rain down um, the meteors. But, uh, four o'clock in the morning, you said? Um, I can't remember the exact time, but it, it's... Um, a bit more about it. Yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd be as the sun's going up in, uh, in the UK. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a peak of a meteor shower tonight, isn't it? Uh, it's the quadrant, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also the peak, of, it's also the peak of the... Uh, the, the, the rain shower outside as well. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A few patches of clears. Huh? Yeah, there were actually a few patches actually because we came late. It's very yeah. quite nice now. The, the Mars, um, the, the comet going near Mars, yeah, yeah. is there a possibility it could be pulled in, in towards Mars? Uh, I think it's going so fast. It's, 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 um, um, I think they're just about ruled out of collision now, but um, certainly when it was discovered, it was a sort of a 1 in 25 ish sort of event. So, I mean, it would have been a it would have been incredible. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, the slightly frightening thing is that it was discovered on the 1st of January 2013. Um, so that gives you about, I don't know, 22 months notice of a full on collision at 30 kilometers, you know, 30 kilometers a second or something. And when you say 50,000 miles, it's not far, is it? It's not far at all, yeah. no. That, that, that's, that's about one hour. If it's one hour out, it's going to hit Mars, sort of thing. Um, you know, which just shows you it, it, it's, that is very Because the variable is the, the magnetic pull of what Mars might have with it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just going far too fast for. You know, Mars has got a reasonably high mass, but not. Yeah, not, that's right. Not, not very. So it's not Jupiter, that, that might be a different thing. Also. If it was Jupiter, it could be something different, yeah. Um, I think the internet's going to re reveal. Refinement of the data. Yeah, quite probably. Yeah, close that's right. Uh, as always with that sort of thing. I mean, when the first discovery was made you know, in uh, in January, uh, you've only got a couple of data points to uh, to, to look at. Um, what they did manage to do was find a an image showing the comet from before it was officially discovered, um, and that allowed them to refine the orbit enough to say it's actually probably one in a thousand chance rather than one in twenty five. Um, but it's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, there's not many opportunities to see a comet that close, and certainly when we've got all that hardware so close, mm -hmm. you just hope that they're not going to do another government shutdown. And we'll actually see it this time. Um, so, yeah. Uh, as usual, these will be all be tweeted out uh, live as it as it happens. So if you are on the Twitter, you'll be uh, kept up to date. <laughs>